Hi, my name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is the long-awaited um, next episode to the Easy Engine. I'm going to try and kick it off uh, quite quickly now. Other things have got in the way. Shut up, Matt. Let's get on with it. Right, so the first thing you can see here is I've got some PTFE, which is basically um, Teflon uh, rod. I think it's 10 or 12 millimetres. I think it's 10. Um, and then I've got a 1.5, uh, no, sorry, a 1.6 millimetre um, lanthanated uh, tungsten electrode from uh, my TIG welder. So uh, the first thing we want to do is turn this um, M10 stainless steel bolt that I had originally. We've uh, done the nut and all the rest of it and um, got the uh, basically machine the thread to pretty much what we want. Now what we need to do is make an electrode arm. Now you could always weld this or what have you, but we're going to do it a bit differently. So what I've got here is I'm, I've got a 7mm uh, tungsten carbide uh, end mill and I'm basically just chewing away at either side, um, basically to leave an electrode, or basically a bridge, and then cut across it. Um, now, because I've uh, basically used an end mill and done a plunge cut inside the internals, a 6.2mm uh, end mill into the internals of the, um, of the actual bolt itself, when you mill down far enough, you end up breaking through, which is what you can see there. And there's a bit of a close-up of that, uh, where you can see it's broken through. And then what we're left with now is um, a uh, electrode. Now it looks like it's off center of the circle. That's the burr that's on the inside of the circle. When you, once you see it all cleaned up and all the rest of it, you'll see that it is basically centralized. Um, how far is that electrode pointing out? Well, it's got to go beyond the center, basically. That's about it. And uh, there you can see from a side profile. So you can see how far I plunge cut. You can see that into the side, and you can see how much of a, an electrode arm we have hanging over. Now I've actually got some videos under the microscope of me actually um, working on this. So you can see there that I'm, I've got to play the video. You might hear some mouse clicking and stuff, because this is how I do this after editing stuff. But you can see I've got, um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a square file. It's one of these little Swiss files that cost a bloody fortune. Actually, that's a triangle file, sorry. Um, it's just basically one that I had at hand. And all you can do is, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to one, uh, sand it down, uh, file it down so basically we get rid of that thread that was hanging off over the edge. The next thing I'm trying to do is smooth over all the corners and make everything rounded. Um, you will get heat spots uh, where you have sharp edges. Here I have um, the plug on the side, so you can see I've got a rat tail file there. And I'm basically just getting rid of all the burrs and trying to uh, basically add a chamfer slash radius to the inside of the um, un of the underside, should I say, of the actual electrode arm. And I might end up speeding this clip up because it does go on for a bit. But you can see it's hard to get access to it, but as long as you try and round it off as well as you can. Um, the next clip, uh, this is where I've basically finished doing all that. And all I'm trying to do now is to just, it's just the electrode tip, basically that's what I want to kind of polish up to a certain degree. I want to clean it up so there's no um, hot spot areas and all the rest of it, so it doesn't melt it. It probably won't get that hot, but just to make sure you want to try and clean up. The rest of it, don't worry about the rest of it, the thread, um, the actual hex and all the rest of it, you don't need to worry about. It's just that electrode tip on the end um, that you, uh, the earthing arm basically, that you want to kind of clean up. And here you can see that's what one side is, and I'm basically just attacking it with some 800 paper. Um, just to basically polish it up and all this. And then when I turn it over, you'll see in a second, I'll turn it over there. You can see you can see the kind of finish I've got on that side. And then when I turn it over the other way, you can kind of see what finish I've got there. So, you know, it's a bit, basically, it's a bit smoother. Because I did the 800, then 1,000. It's basically just to take out um, any rough bumps and blah, 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 blah. So the next thing, now we've kind of just sorted out the arm to a certain degree. So it's a reasonable fashion, is I've got my PTFE. Um, chucked up and then basically I'm just turning this to a shoulder um, and this is the bit that's going to actually insert into the metal section of the plug um, and then you can basically just see me just machine it down to size then I have to put the relief in and uh, I'm not really paying too much attention to how much relief or um, protrusion the actual uh, insulate has this plug isn't going to last long let's just get that out of the way, or let's get that out of there straight away. This plug isn't going to last long. Um, 
if you run it for ages, you know, we're just using it for our demonstrations. We're going to run it a couple of times, we're going to test it once or twice, and then that's about it. You know, really, you would want some kind of proper um, insulator. You know, you'd want some kind of ceramic or something like that. Glass is another good one. You know, they make a lot of glass plugs, again, which is a ceramic. But um, as you can see here, all I'm doing now is I'm just, uh, I fit it into the plug. I want to turn it um, as an entire plug. And then I'm drilling a 1.4, I think it's a 1.4 millimeter hole. And then just finish off the outside. Now the best thing to do is, I must say before I quickly shift on, is that if you're doing something like this in a soft plastic, because um, PTFE is a soft plastic, uh, the best thing to do is if you're trying to drill a small hole, is to really take your time, peck very, very slowly. If you try and peck with a 1.5 mil drill bit really quickly, even though the material is soft, it will deflect the drill bit. Any road, uh, the other thing as well, as you can see there, I'm trying to drill in as much meat as possible, and then I machine down the profile for the outside. So the next picture we have here is the uh, tungsten electrode. Do not just snap tungsten. If you stick it in a vise or something and try and break it, it will actually split the tungsten. Um, ask any welder who does um, TIG welding and stuff or what have you. Um, if you if you snap a tungsten, you will get a split right down the material, which means you'll get dodgy arcing and all sorts of fatigue welding and for spark plugs. Um, so what I did here is I basically went round the entire file with my uh, triangle file and basically just uh, basically filed a, a groove all the way around it, and then you can snap the tip. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. But you can see me there, that's where it's snapped in the little vise. And then I've got it tipped over on its end under the microscope. And you can see that it's basically clean. It's, it's broken quite clean. And then I basically just filed it down. Now this end that I'm filing down here that's on, you know, on the image now. Um, this is a... Uh, what am I trying to say? Oh yeah, this is going to be the um, HT end. Not the actual uh, in the engine end. The end I'm going to use wants to be as flat as possible. You'll see this from electrodes on spark plugs. Um, but there you can see that's the, basically the coloured end, and then I just basically take off the colour with a bit of acetone. And uh, then I fit it to the spark plug basically by just basically pressing it into the, um, into the PTFE. Now, because I've used a smaller hole, because the uh, PTFE was a press fit, a uh, very tight press fit on the... Um, spark plug body and because the uh, bleh, tungsten was also a, quite a tight press fit because tungsten is quite stiff even though it's a 1.6 millimeter rod um, basically what we're doing is we're, I'm, I'm squashing the PTFE so hopefully even though it's quite slippy stuff hopefully that'll make sure it, basically the plug can retain it uh, if you use ceramic or glass or something you're gonna have to find some kind of clip or some kind of way of soldering it in position or something like that. There's the other end, you can see where I've just uh, filed down the end and all the rest of it. So that's the end we're going to grab with our HT lead. And then there's the finished plug as an entire hole with the tungsten running through it. Um, hope you enjoyed that. We're also going to fit a little copper gasket to this as well um, when we actually torque it down to the actual cylinder head. One of the next things I'm going to move on to is the exhaust port and the uh, combustion chamber with the squish band and what have you for the cylinder head. Hope you enjoy all that and I will see you in a bit.